welcome back. Thank you. How are you? I'm good, man. How are you? I'm doing well, thank you. How's the fight? <laughs> a lot of fun. Blessed to be in there. Maki's a warrior, so those are the kind of guys that need to be in the UFC. The kind of guys that come to fight. And especially when people are at home right now, they don't have any sports to watch. Those are the kind of fights I think people pay to see and um, they get their subscriptions for. So I'm excited to see who Maki fights next because he's, 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 he's the most fun I've ever had him to fight with. So God bless him. You don't usually hear guys talk about their opponents like that. What exactly about him do you enjoy so much? Sounds like he's made a fan out of you. Well, I've been a fan of Maki before I was even in the UFC. And when you get a share of Octagon with somebody like that, who's a warrior, like some of my favorite fighters, like Max Holloway, Maki, be one of my favorite fighters, they always come to fight. And that's what we're here for. We're here to fight. You know, it's the ultimate fighting championship. That's what we're here for. And somebody who's coming to bring it every single time, it didn't matter to him. Like in the fight, when he's down and around, he's throwing three or four or five hard shots. You can hear it. He was respectful before and after the fight. We talked before the fight. We talked after. We're going to go out and eat after this. So, you know, it's like, that's what fighting's about. Fighting's about respect and about do what we love to do. And when there's love, you don't have to disrespect anybody. You know somebody's going to bring it. You know, I'm blessed to be American and Congolese. I'm blessed to be able in the UFC. So it's like, why ruin that? Why ruin that with talking junk? It's, it's, a, new, it's a new beginning. It's a new time. And those are the kind of guys who are going to bring it. We were chill the entire week. We didn't talk a lot. Obviously, we had work to do. But we knew when the, the cage locked, that was time to go to work. And after that, we're brothers. That's awesome, man. Thank you. Um, you hit him with some good shots. Were you surprised that he was able to take your power? Because he took he ate them quite well. Man, there's some shots. I, well, I was laughing at my coach. I was like, I thought I heard him. And I was trying to come in, and they threw like four or five shots back. And I was like, well, OK, let's fight a little bit smarter now. Um, not necessarily surprised because of the kind of guy that he is. I believe that he fights from his spirit. I've been mentioning before. And I knew he was going to bring it. So I couldn't get complacent in there. I got interviewed before this, and they were saying, asking me about Maki. And one thing I knew is that he's never going to stop fighting. He's never going to stop fighting, and I love that about him. I've got to say, for a guy at this point of your career, your composure in the cage is very impressive. Like, to get to round three and not be rushing your shots trying to get there. Thank you. What do you attribute that to? Is that something you've always had? I think it's been developed. It's been my, the tribe that I have, the Jimmo tribe back in Gastonia, North Carolina. My head coach, it starts with him, Jeff Jimmo. He's blessed with me. He's blessed me so much. Uh, taught me a lot, taking time and patient with me. My cornerman, Diego Costa, who just said he talks to me through the entire fight. Seki, one of my best friends, and nutrition. So it's like you have a family. Then all my training partners, Barbarina, Hot Sauce, Scott, Selecki, Salter, Honeycut, Chase, it doesn't matter who it is. All my teammates, like, they're there for me. And they've beat me up in practice bad. <laughs> so when you get into the cage, you know you're, you're in the octagon, you know you're ready. I have my parents, it's in my faith, it's in God. That's where my foundation is. And when I trust God, I know I never have to worry. Last one for me. That's two fights in about two weeks, basically, right? Mm -hmm. So have you earned yourself a break? Or do you think, oh, well, I can probably get a third one in there quickly enough? I'm ready to go September 12th. I'm ready to go. Um, I'd like to find that card. My big brother, Brian Barberina, my mentor. He's the, way, he's the big reason I'm here in the UFC. And uh, I'd, love, I'd love to share the same day with him. You know, my coach tells me, you gotta admire your work at the end of your career. I haven't made it yet. I mean, it's my first fight in the UFC. It's a blessing for sure. But how many times do you see somebody get their first win and then they fall off? Or they get their first win and, and they start doing crazy things. I gotta get back to work, gotta go back home, reconfigure, made some mistakes in the fight, gotta improve those. So what better way to show up than on September 12th? Congrats, man, I hope you get it. Thank you, sir. Impa, right here, man. How are Jim Reeshaber, cage side yeah. seat. 18 days ago, just, just take us through your month of August and just what an experience it's been for you, please. The month of August. The month of August has been a lot of fun. Uh, blessed to do what I love. You know, when you're, out of, when you're out of fights for a while and you don't get a fight for almost a whole year, it's like almost like knocking the rust off last fight. Anthony Adams, still a solid guy. Could be in the UFC right now. And then to fight, your first fight in the UFC against Maki Patolo, you're like, okay, here we are. And um, it's been a fun, fun month, a blessing. It showed, it's a testimony to my people around me. Like, you know, it's like funny sitting here on the stage, I shouldn't be the only one up here. Diego Costa should be up here, Seki Dolfino, Coach Jeff Jimmo, all my teammates. You should have, like, see this whole stage filled up because my family <laughs> just, like, I couldn't do this by myself. So it's a testimony to the people around me. Help me enjoy this month of August. They made it super smooth, never nervous, never worried, and blessed to do what I love. It's uh, living in a blessing, living in a dream. Good things coming in bunches for you. Do you remember exactly what you said to Dana 18 days ago today when you were on the Contender Series? 
just take us through what you said to him about when you'll fight, how often you'll fight, whatever. And now just kind of relay that to how you're feeling right now that you got this one under your belt. Well, man, it's, it's in faith, you know. God says, speak things into existence. My mom taught me that. My dad, too. And when we came around the Contender Series, the plan was claim victory, fight right away. I told Mr. White that, that we're ready to work, we're ready to be here, let's work. We spoke right after the fight, right after I got my contract or when the announcement came. And I told him I'm ready to fight again right after. And here I am. Uh, when you speak things into existence, but you put the work in, you have faith, and you surround yourself with the best people, there's nothing you can't do. And that's how I look at it. So what do you want to accomplish the rest of this year? I think about maybe four or five more times, and then be ready to fight for the title soon. All right. Lofty ambitions, man. Congrats. Thank Good you. job. Just a, a couple quick ones. Uh, first, uh, you could definitely tell you put the hard work. You have a great team behind you. But are you the kind of guy that things come easy to? Because I think if people look and say, man, this guy's only been fighting three years, but you're out here fighting at such a high level, have things kind of always came easy for you in terms of sports and maybe just whatever other activities? It's funny. I didn't grow up really playing sports. Um, I started playing football my senior year of high school, and I started playing. I started fighting my senior year of college. Uh, one of my favorite Bible verses says, all hard work brings profit, but mere talk leads only to poverty. And that's one thing I lean on. You got to show up every single day and be consistent. No, it didn't come easy, but it wasn't hard in a way that like it, it destroyed me because this is my dream. So yeah. whatever came with it, it came along. Um, I'd be wrong to not thank the USC staff. If you see how hard this crew is working, and they have fights every single weekend, they have people coming in and out, they have fighters who don't understand the language, and you see them, they, I draw a lot of inspiration from them. They show up every single day smiling. A uh, quick example was a guy named Jeff. He saw that I had to get to an appointment, I had my media obligations. And I was like, oh man, I'm gonna be late. I don't wanna be late for uh, my uh, therapy at the PI. He pulled up another driver, said, just go, just go, we got you. Canceled my Uber and I made it here in time. It's the little things. It's the security staff bringing your food to you, so you don't have to come down when you're during quarantine. It's everybody from the Contender Series show. Like, this whole staff, the medical team, you can't, I, I need to be here for three or four more hours just to say thank you. So it's like, when you're surrounded by people like that, they make your job easy. They make your job, well, I wouldn't say easy to disrespect any fighter, but they make it more fun. They make you smooth. And I can keep the main thing the main thing, and that's fighting. I'm sure they would appreciate that. That's, that's very nice for you to say. I'd love for you to try to clarify. You said you made some mistakes out there. What mistakes did you see that, uh, that happened out there? <laughs> well, a few of them. So I think I was leaning too much on my punches and uh, wasn't as disciplined as I needed to be on some of the shots. Got a little overzealous and paid for those. As you can see, I'm bleeding. Thank you. Uh, on defense, I made myself a sitting target rather than moving my feet. So there's some things I need to adjust, and we're going to do that and get the opportunity September 12th, you'll see the adjustments. I love it, I love it. Uh, and lastly, you said that uh, you are gonna you were gonna meet with him afterwards, you were talking about Maki, is that just, hey, you wanna hang out? Are you guys talking about maybe training together? Or did you actually, I mean, what were you setting up? Well, I asked him if we could train together in the future for sure, and he's all for it. Uh, we're gonna get together and eat, you know, enjoy tonight. Uh, tonight wouldn't be possible without, I guess, one another and our coaches, so. I think, you know, MMA can get tarnished about just being people who talk trash and people who hate on one another. But really, I think some of the best words are people that just come and do it because they love it. And he's become my brother now. We shed blood together. So we can also break bread together, too. That's awesome. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Over here to the left, Impa. So you took this fight after a, a fight that was kind of a battle. His fight was kind of shorter. Was there any concern that as the rounds continued if the fight wasn't stopped that you might have some uh, some problems because of the fact that it was such a quick turnaround and you did have a tough fight? No, there are no concerns about the fight itself or the length of the fight. We prepare every single day. Uh, coach, Coach's wife, because this is Jimbo, she was out there helping me with swimming workouts and getting me ready. So shout out to Coach Steph. She's the best. Uh, we were getting after it. We get after the pool. Brian had to fight, so it was my job to get back with my teammates. So I never really had any time off. So all I knew was that we're going to get better. Stacky ran my conditioning, and the we want to weaponize discipline. That's what we're here to do. Absolutely. Was the way the fight turned out kind of something you guys planned, or was there ever a thought about using more wrestling since it appeared you had the advantage in that category? I thought I, well, I tried to take him down. <laughs> it didn't work. Uh, so I wanted to get after him to strike with him, though. I respect his striking, and I feel like it'd be insulting to Maki and to my team and 
Diego Costa, who's taught me so much over the past two weeks, those are adjustments we've made since the last fight, to not use what's been taught. To run away and be scared is not what this is about. It's about showing up to fight every day, coming to fight. And yeah, wrestling can be part of that, but when somebody wants to engage in the middle, once somebody wants to throw down, you, you give it back and you get after it. So that's what I was there to do. Last one for me. You've only been a pro since last year when you're in the UFC. That's super impressive. Thank you. Um, you fought a more experienced opponent here. Are you okay with continuing with that down the line, or do you feel like you wouldn't mind fighting some young guns like yourself if you had the choice? I fight anybody who's willing to fight. Uh, I like to fight the best, though. So anybody, whether they're young or they have 30 fights, 40 fights, as long as they sign the contract, I'm going to be there. Fantastic. Congratulations. Thank you.